All right, Randy, thank you so much. Hey, it is a hot topic right now. How does wearing a mask affect a child's speech and language development? So joining us right now with some insight are speech and language pathologists Brooke Dwyer and Bridget Hillsberg, also known as the Speech Sisters. Ladies, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let's start with the things we do know, because I feel like in this climate and this culture, still a lot of ongoing studies, a lot of things we don't know, but where do we begin with what we do know? So it is important to say that, you know, like you said, everything is limited right now. There is, the, the research is happening in real time, but preliminary studies are showing that wearing masks may have a negative impact on a child's language development. And as speech and language pathologists, we know that children learn language through both auditory input and visual input. So when you cover up that visual component, chances are it is going to have a negative effect. Sure, and which leads me to my next question. If as parents we're wondering, because I have an eight-year-old and a three-year-old, and I bet a lot of us are wondering, what do we look for, right? What are the signs of delays? Where can you point us when it comes to that question? So when it comes to speech and language, you always want to look at milestones. So these are called communication milestones. And a milestone indicates usually what most children are able to do by that given age. So we're always striving to get our little ones to meet those milestones. And if a little one is not meeting the milestones, then it may be time to reach out for early intervention or for speech and language therapy for the older population. And of course, it also goes back to parents at home listening, thinking, OK, what do I do? Are those the best resources then simply reach out, perhaps get a consultation an evaluation? I know as parents, we're always looking to do what is best for our kiddos, but it's not always clear where to start. It can be really hard to know where to start. I think uh, you can always start with talking to your pediatrician and typically your pediatrician can help guide you to find a speech and language pathologist. Um, that's a that's a great place to start. For the younger children, you know, birth to three years old, many states in, in the United States offer free or um, public funded early intervention services. So that is always an option too. And then typically later on after age three, P uh, children can get services through the school district. That sounds great. Okay, anything else that you would like to add perhaps to ease some of these concerns with mask wearing. Obviously, it's been sort of a hot topic for quite some time right now. Uh, what would you like to leave us moving forward? When it comes to little ones, so we specialize in that early intervention, birth to three years old. So when you're getting these little ones babbling and into saying those first words and combining words together, there is so much that a parent can do at home. One example would be talk to your child during your everyday routines because you're doing these things each and every day. So they are repetitive. You want to talk to your child. You want to repeat words and you want to show items as you label them or do actions as you say that word to help build more meaning for your child. I like that. Fantastic. Wonderful advice. Brooke and Bridget, these speech sisters, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for all of the information.